the dog and I here at the famous Cadbury's Chocolate Factory in Hobart, Tasmania, Australia. Why are we here? Why is this place here? Well, it starts with a dream. A dream that didn't start even a hundred years ago when they first built this place. They've been pumping out chocolate bars here for a century. It starts 200 years ago. And not in Australia, but in the United Kingdom. And to dream about why you would build a factory like this, away from all of the major economic zones, away from the smoke amongst the trees. And why is this place in dream form as much a garden as it is a piece of industrial food making apparatus? In Birmingham in 1824, John Cadbury, who was from a Quaker family, began selling drinking chocolate. He felt such a soft drink was virtuous compared to sinful alcohol. In time, his sons took over the business and it was their decision to focus on chocolate bars, a product that was not possible to produce before 1847. Cadbury as a company decided to build out in Australia since Cadbury's first overseas order had come from the southern nation in 1881. By the 1900s, Australia had already developed into an important market for the company. The owners considered Melbourne and Sydney first, but were turned off by strike action. Upon inspection, there was a feeling by those in charge that Tasmanian workers might not be quite as sophisticated. The Cadbury chose Claremont because it was isolated, but not too isolated. 16 kilometres from the CBD, it was still within nature. The cool Tasmanian climate was ideal. Cooking techniques of that time meant that you couldn't produce chocolate if the weather got hot. They bought the 100 hectare site in 1920, most of which they never intended to fill up with factory equipment. It was to be a smaller replication of the factory already existing back in England. As such, homes for workers would be built and gardens would be planted. By 22, they were sending chocolate bars to market, very fast by today's standards. Cocoa came from Ghana, sugar came from Queensland, and milk, the final and freshest ingredient, came from Tasmanian cows. The Cadbury logo on the side of the building is based on the signature of William Cadbury. Today, Cabri itself is owned by the multinational Mondelez, listed on the NASDAQ in New York City. A bloke, his dog, Fredo the Frog. A big fan of Fredo, but he almost didn't get to come into existence. They almost went with a different type of creature. Fredo Frog was invented in Melbourne by the McRobertson Company in 1930. Initially their plan was to create a chocolate mouse until people pointed out that eating rats wasn't super appealing. In 1967, Cadbury took over production. Cadbury believed that making chocolate was women's work. And so, a majority of the work was done by women initially. Women came out from England and trained women in Tasmania. The women wore white uniforms. They looked like nurses. This was especially true also in advertising. It was all part of an idea that chocolate was a kind of health food. The marriage bar doesn't exist in the modern world anymore, but it did then. Once a woman got married, once she was hitched, Cadbury stopped employing her. The practice continued for a while but was basically killed off during World War II when they had no choice but to modernise their dealings with female staff. This spot here 
Here's one of the last like it on the River Derwent, a beach with sand on it. The further you go inland, the less sand you get. Obviously, you get to a more traditional river situation. The reason I'm here is because of what's out there. There's black swans normally on the surface, but beneath the surface, there's something of interest. If you were to get a big magnet and go magnet fishing, you might find the relics that I'm talking about. There's a whole bunch of cannonballs out there because during World War I, this whole area was used for training soldiers before they were shipped off to fight in Europe and the Middle East. In 1914, when World War I kicked off, Tasmanian men started enlisting. A training camp was set up at Triffitt's Point, where the Capri factory now is. The tent city was among farmland then. Tasmanian troops fought in major battlefronts in France, Belgium, Palestine and Gallipoli. 2,432 service personnel from Tasmania died in the Great War. Almost 16% of those who left the island would not return. The dog and I are enjoying a leisurely stroll up this path. It's not just a path for walking your dog. It was home to something a bit more substantial. Capri used to have its own train line that branched off from the main one back that way. It had its own trains and it was used to haul chocolate and other cargo as well as people. My mum came to Tasmania in the 1960s with her friend and they travelled. They got a train from the CBD down at Macquarie Point, I guess you'd call it now. And uh, they rode out here on the train and had a look around and a proper tour of the Cabris factory. You can't do that anymore. The Cabri branch of the line closed to freight traffic in about 1983, and it was later used by the Tasmanian Loco Company to store their rolling stock. The track was cleaved from the earth in 1992. You can't get behind the gate anymore. It's, um, it's all closed off to punters like me. You used to be able to go on tours of Cabri and you could do it for about 50 years, but it was all shut down in 2008 because the H&S standards changed. They got a bit better. A lot of people that grew up in Hobart, went to school in Hobart, would have been on tours with their classes to the factory. I think I went three times and it was always the same. You were met with this unexpected, pungent smell of chocolate being made. It wasn't as nice as you'd probably expect it to be when you're a kid. You right, dog? Anyhow, you could walk around and um, you used to be able to just take chocolates off conveyor belts and more so out of these big bins that were everywhere. Remember they had the room where the roses chocolates were being made, a personal favourite of mine. And uh, they just had these big bins and in each bin were different types of chocolates and you just put your hand in, grab a bunch and stick the chocolates in your pocket when the teacher or the, uh, the workers weren't looking. Everybody knew you were doing it but no one really cared, it was all, it was all part of the fun. Then on the ride back to class the chocolate had started to melt and by the time you got back to school your pants would be soaked through with dairy milk chocolate. Cabri was founded by Quakers. Quakers' religion tells them that every person has direct access to the Christian God, with no need for intermediaries like priests. Quakers believe that gardens are the physical manifestation of this inner light. Nothing is more productive than a factory, but nothing is nicer than a garden. 
By being in a garden, a person can dream directly with God. The Cabri estate is a religious monument. The pavilions of trees and the open lawns beneath the leaves are divine communication between the factory of chocolate and the people of Hobart.